Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks a lot for joining us. We're broadcasting live today from our Jerusalem headquarters, and we'll be discussing Counter Release 5 in Alma and Alma Analytics. I want to point out two things at the beginning here. This is not an in-depth training session but just rather a brief overview and introduction to the support of Compte Release 5 in Alma and Alma Analytics. And I see we've got a full room here. We've also got a lot of people connected remotely. I'm going to kindly request that questions and comments will wait for the end because we are recording this for those who couldn't join us. So with, with the January 2020 release, Counter Release 5 is fully supported in Alma and Alma Analytics. Fully supported. It's already in use for several months among our early adopters, and we thank them very much for their scrutinous testing, for their helping out in many aspects of this rollout of Counter Release 5, which, as I stated, is now January 2020 fully supported. It's still December right now, the 20, January 2020 release will fully support Counter Release 5, and I will be showing today the January release. This is my development environment of Alma University, and I am in the January 2020 release. So, Counter Release 5. Counter, very brief introduction. Most of you already know about Counter. The reports received from a vendor to the institution with the usage statistics for those resources purchased by the institution from the vendor. Release 5 is a new release, a new format, replacing eventually Release 4. We are simultaneously supporting Release 4 and Release 5. Not all of the vendors have moved over to Release 5. Those who have, we are supporting. That's both for the manual upload and for the Sushi upload. Sushi upload, the standardized usage statistics harvesting initiative. We've got a job that runs every week to do the Sushi harvesting and it also can be done manually. It can be run manually. So the reports can be loaded manually, the job can be run manually, or the job can just run automatically every month. So here I am in a January release of Alma, and let's go to the Acquisitions Load Usage Data screen. And the Load Usage Data screen, as those of you who have worked with Release 4, already know this is where files can be loaded manually and viewed uh, both for those which have been loaded manually and loaded via sushi and already on our screen we can see files which have been successfully harvested via the sushi scheduler for release 5 all of those ending in a colon r5 are release 5 files this is a report type, TRJ1. And then right under it, we have a release 4 file from EBSCO that has been loaded underneath a release 5 file from Wiley, which has also been loaded. And if we go to the report type, we also see that we you can view all of the types or the release 4 types or the many release 5 types. And from here... Of course, I can view the report of the upload, and I can download the file. Let's actually download this J1 file just to take a look at it. So that's downloading right here, and I'm going to open it. And these files are in JSON format. Unlike the Release 4 files, which were in XML, these are in Release 5. And I like to view the JSON files in the raw data pretty print, but... You can view them, of course, as you wish. Uh, now, this is not a necessary part of the whole process. I just want to show a Release 5 counter report that has been loaded to Alma. I'm looking here. It says Platform Wiley Online Library. Then it's got to be Publisher Wiley, the title Abacus. And these are measures 
four, release five, unique item requests, total item requests. Then it's got a digital object identifier, uh, Wiley ABAC, ISSN, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm looking now at a release five file that has been loaded along with the measures. And we're going to see these measures shortly in Alma Analytics. Let's take a look at another one. I'm back at the load usage data. Let me close that tab so we don't get confused later. And let's take a look here, for example, by file name includes ProQuest. That's always a nice file name to look for. And let's see what we've got here for release 5. And here we got another TR, TRJ1, TRB1. Let's take a look at this TRB1 that was fully processed. It covers October 2019, again by the Sushi Scheduler. And here it is. Let's open that one up as well. And let's take a look at what we've got here. So let's again raw data pretty print. And what have we got here? Total unique title requests. That's another uh Release 5 measure, total item request 23. This is for the Digital National Security Archive. Total item request 23, unique title request 3 for a begin date, end date. So all we've done right now is seen which files have already been uploaded, and we've looked at the actual counter release 5 reports which were uploaded. And again, those were uploaded, in this case, via the Sushi Scheduler here. Now, let's go look at the actual Sushi accounts which loaded these files. So I'm going to go to a vendor here, and what a better vendor to go to than ProQuest. And just like in the Release 4, if we go to the Usage Data tab, that's where we see the Sushi accounts. Um, here we've got two Sushi accounts, ProQuest and ProQuest eBook Central, and in the lower part of the screen, just like for Release 4, we've got the files which have been loaded, and again, we can see simultaneously Release 4, Release 5. If a vendor had Release 4 previously and now Release 5, and we're viewing, we can see them both, uh, here, let's take a look at an actual event, actual sushi account. Let's take this one here. And it's a little bit different for the release 5. For example, the release 5 uh, sushi account has an API key, which wasn't in release 4. And the report types are added here. There's one sushi account for all report types as opposed to release 4 which had a separate release release excuse me a separate sushi account for each report type here in sushi in counter release 5 there's one sushi account for all of the report types and just to show how this is working and which ones are already not only supported not just saying supported but actually tried and tested and work and contributed by our early testers. If I choose now add sushi account, now we have an option to choose either release four or either release five. I'm stressing all the time here that both release four and release five are simultaneously supported because there were a lot of questions about that. In various forums, people have asked when we move to release five, what about the vendors still working in release four? You can still work with both. And if I choose release five, then I add a sushi account release five and I get a screen appropriate for release five, for example, with the API key. Now also here, if I go to sushi account and I click to add a sushi account, Alma knows that because I'm in a sushi account of release five, it's only gonna bring me supported vendors of release five. And here's a good point, place to point out. We've got 70 supported sushi vendors in the community zone. When I clicked here, I'm going to close this. When I clicked here, sushi account, I can either start typing and it'll do the pickup, or if I select from a list, I'm viewing now 70 sushi accounts in the community zone, which I can copy to my institution. Now also note, 
a lot of these, perhaps I wouldn't say the majority, a lot, it might be the majority, have been contributed by our early adapters who, like I said at the beginning, we thank very much without their help, without their testing, we wouldn't have been able to roll this out so smoothly as is happening right now. University of Texas Dallas, who we thank profusely, has tested these. That These aren't just loaded by University of Texas, by Harvard, by other early testers who are already using Release 5, but they've actually been used before they're contributed, they work. So then they're contributed. So we don't have a situation that something's in here and doesn't work. I do want to point out that like Release 4, we're also dependent on these vendors. If MIT Press, McRoy Hill, or JSTOR makes a change, we need to go along with that change. They need to fully support it. It's not only on the side of Ex Libris. But these here have been contributed by the community and can be copied by each institution. If I want to copy now the Physical Society of Japan, so I take that, it automatically fills in the vendor URL, and then I fill in my unique credentials. Of course, the requester ID and customer ID can't be copied from the community zone because they're different for every vendor. And then I can choose the test connection. And I can begin adding my report types. And like I stated before, I'll have one uh, sushi account for the various report types that are supported. It's not one sushi account per report type. So that's enough now on the sushi accounts. So we've looked at so far within Alma at the load usage data, and we've seen counter release five uh, reports which have already been loaded. We've downloaded the actual reports and looked at them. Then we went to a vendor and looked in the usage data tab at the sushi accounts of release five. And now, of course, we're going to go to analytics. And let's start by looking at the out-of-the-box dashboard. Now, where is this out-of-the-box dashboard? Uh, under the Alma folder, as you know, is where we have the out-of-the-box folders and reports and dashboards. So here we've got counter usage via counter reports and usage via counter reports release five. Now, it's a separate folder than the usage via counter reports which existed previously. The reason being the types of measures are completely different than release four. It's, it's like apples and oranges, as the cliche says. Completely different, we separated them. If someone manually wants to make a report or a dashboard or do whatever combining them, he can do that or she can do that. We have separated them into separate folders because of the essential differences between the measures. So here we've got the usage via counter reports dashboard. And let's look at a few of the tabs. We've got here, for example, the trends by month. I'm looking at the trends by month now by what we default to, which is the TR unique item requests. But let's say, for example, I want to choose a different one. Instead of the TR unique title requests, maybe I want the PR unique item requests. So I've got all of these. These are all the measures we saw before when we were choosing the, uh, the report types to filter by in the load usage data. So now I've got the PR. And let's go... I could even choose all. And if I choose all, then as the name suggests, I'll have all that I'll take a tad longer to load, but I'll have all of them, and all of them combined. There we are, actually didn't take too long to load. So now I'm looking at the trend of all of my uh, usage for 2019. And for release five, I'm not gonna have anything for 2018, of course, because it didn't exist. And I've got here up to October because it's now December, so nothing earlier was loaded. And you, it's the end of the month that the previous month is supplied by the vendors, not Ex Libris, by the vendors to the institution. The vendors are not now going to be already supplying all of November. It, it, the whole process takes a little bit, but it's got here up until October. I'm going to put this back now 
uh, to the default. Let's reset that. Reset to the default values and apply. And let's continue on. So then we've got the most used titles. Again, it's defaulting to the unique title requests. And I see the most used titles by the measures. I've got the table. I've got the graph. Then we've got the most used platforms. Again, I've got the table. I've got the graph. And most used publishers. Again, the table and the graph. And usage amounts for all material types for three calendar years ago until the current date, which, of course, at the current time is going to have only 2019 because we're talking about Release 5, which started January 1st, 2019. Now, I can also come along and make my own report. For example, I can say New Analysis, and I can choose the Usage Data. And inside the Usage Data subject area, we have also separated the Release 5 and the Pre-Release 5. Just like we have a folder in the default folders for Counter Release 5 and a folder for Counter Before Release 5, within the Usage Data subject area, we've got Usage Data Details Release 5 and Usage Data Details, which was before Release 5, which is Release 4. And then, for example, let's take the usage measures total. So let's throw in there the usage measures total. And we'll, here's all the other measures we can put in. These are all the measures that we saw before within the counter reports and within when we were filtering by the various report types. And let's also go here to the usage date. And let's say we want by the usage date year. I'll throw that in. And let's get the usage date month key. And let's filter, for example, by usage date year 2019. Because if we're in release 5, like I've been saying, it's only 2019 that's relevant. We'll get rid of that in the display. So we're just filtering by it. We'll take the usage date month key. Let's sort that ascending, starting with January. Did I do ascending there? Yes, I did. And let's take a look at the results. So now we're building our own report. And what do we got here? The usage measures totals. Looks like March and April were big months. And let's make that into a nice visualization. Oh, this would be nice to combine with a separate session on the DV, the data visualization with Counter Release 5, combining two nice new features. Let's take a look here, but we'll stick to Alma Analytics for this one. Let's take a line graph. And there we are. So now we've got a line graph of the usage measures total for Counter Release 5 in Alma Analytics. By the way, all of the Counter Release 5 is also fully supported and integrated in the cost per use. We'll save that session for another day. Thank you very much for joining us, and we hope to see you soon in our next session. Have a nice day.